Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Silent Hill 2. We're going to start by optimizing Windows. After that, we will go in your NVIDIA parameter. And after that, we will go inside of the game. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings. And we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're going to start by gaming over there. So the first one is game bar. This one I really recommend to deactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processors. If you have any other processor, just deactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture, capture. Make sure that everything is deactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode honestly is really, really good. Back then with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power. Uh, back then, uh, we were recommending to use the best performance, but now honestly just use balance you will have better boost clock longer boost clock uh, i did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance and honestly i'm getting better result with balance so super important to do that another thing uh, i want to mention is some recommendations so make sure that your uh, xmp profile is activated if you have it on your bios super important make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your cpu if you have an amd or intel also, make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest updates from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So now let's go to the NVIDIA app. The first thing that I want to recommend, uh, I'm not a huge fan, honestly, of the um, overlay. So NVIDIA overlay, I really recommend to deactivate this one. Sometimes it's causing issue like stuttering. You're losing some FPS with it. So I really recommend to deactivate it. Also, we're going to go to the control panel. I'm going to show you some optimization that you can do. So we're going to go to the manage 3D setting first. So the first thing that you should definitely activate it is your low latency mode. Make sure this one is at on. Another thing that I recommend is your power management mode. This one, pretty much the same thing than the, the, the one from Windows. Make sure that you're using normal. Don't use the maximum performance. I'm getting also better boost clock, more FPS with it. And the last one is your shader cache size. By default, your cache will be a driver default like this. And normally it's four gig. Uh, I recommend to start with 10 if you don't have a lot of space on, on your computer. And if you have a lot of space, go with 100 gig. Honestly, it's a game changer for your cache size. Uh, you're going to struggle less with stuttering and also that your game need to recompile and stuff like that. If you install a lot of game, uh, this one can be very good for you. Now let's go to change resolution. The last one, really important to make sure that first of all, that you're selecting the uh, monitor, uh, that uh, first of all, you're using the native resolution of your monitor and also super important to have a proper refresh rate over there. Uh, by default, sometimes when you just change your monitor, it will be at 60 Hertz. Uh, so depending on the type of monitor that you buy, 144, 240, make sure that you're selecting this one. This option also, you can change it on Windows or your Radeon driver if you have a Radeon car. So no problem with that. The last one is your G-Sync. If you want to activate your G-Sync, really important to select the monitor. It needs to be compatible and you will enable over there. Uh, I'm not using G-Sync me. I always unlock my FPS because I want the lowest input lag. But if you don't like those steering line, definitely activate your G-Sync over there. So now let's go back to the game. So now inside of the game. So first of all, uh, screen mode, make sure that you're playing full screen. Borderless and window, I was losing FPS and also I was uh, having a more input lag. So my recommendation 
option is go with full screen. Make sure that you're playing native with your resolution. You have some sub, uh, super sampling technique that you can use to optimize your FPS. So don't lower your resolution over there. Ray tracing, for sure, I recommend to put this one at off. You can expect 15 to 20% 20 boost in your FPS. So it's a lot. It really depends. I'm going to tell you which parameter will provide you the most of your FPS. So it really depends on... What do you want to do with this game? Do you just want to run it at 60? Do you want 120? Are you struggling to get your 60? So I'm going to tell you which parameter will provide you the most of your FPS. Uh, frame rate cap, I recommend to go unlimited. You just have like three sh choice. Uh, unlimited, will, you will have less input lag for sure. If you want to lock it at 60, go for it. Uh, honestly, if you have issue with your thermal, sometimes it's, not, it's good to just lock your FPS. Don't go too crazy with this one. V-Sync, I deactivated it just to have like the lowest input like possible. You can use other techniques like FreeSync or G-Sync to synchronize your GPU with your monitor. So uh, again, question of preference over there. Super sampling, you have a lot of different uh, options. My recommendation, if you have an RTX card, go with quality DLSS. You can expect 10 to 12% boost in your FPS. Uh, uh, honestly, lower than the quality, balance, performance, and ultra performance. The game looks very blurry to me, so I'm not a huge fan, so go with quality. If you have an FSR a a card, like, uh, I don't know, a, 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 a video card that is compatible or just a Radiant card, go with FSR 3. Don't use the one. Honestly, 3 is really good. It's almost on par with DLSS. And it's pretty much the same thing. Use quality if you want. Um, it... it, it Lower than that, the game looks a little bit blurry to me. So quality again, and you can expect like 8 to 10% boost in your FPS with FSR3. If you have an Intel video card, you can definitely test the XESS, but nobody has those cards, so who cares? After that, render quality, go with custom if you want to activate the advanced quality setting over there. And just before going there, make sure that your global motion blur is uh, at off. So let's go over there. Anti-aliasing, normally if you're using the LSS, uh, it will not apply, but if you're not using any uh, upscaling technique, I recommend FXAA, it's a basic anti-aliasing, it will do the job, but honestly, TXAA, the game looks too blurry for me, so my recommendation is go with FXAA or just deactivate it. Resolution scalability, go with 100%. Shadow quality, this one, I recommend to go with medium. Um, you need some ambience when you're playing the game and the game looks too flat at low, but it provides a lot of FPS. If I compare high to low, you can expect 12% boost, but at medium, you're going to get 6%. So that's pretty good uh, if you look at this uh, on that side. For the texture quality, I recommend to go with I. Uh, if you have 6 gig and more of VRAM on your video, video card, you should not have any issue with this. Uh, 4 gig go with medium and less than 4 gig go with low. Shader, I recommend to go with medium. Effect quality, this one can tank your FPS when you're fighting. So my recommendation is go with low with this one. And it doesn't affect too much, honestly, the ambience of the game. So low for this one. Separate translucent, go with off. Lens flare, low. Global motion blur, we already put it at off. Ambient inclusion, this one is a bit tricky. Without it, the game looks very flat and you're losing the ambience. At on, honestly, it's good, but you're going to lose 5% of your FPS. So it really depends on how many FPS that you need right now. So my recommendation is go stay at on. SSR, go with off. SSS, SSS quality, go with low. And the last one is image uh, sharpening. The game looks very blurry, so I, I stay at sharpen I. Uh, if you feel that your game looks too much like an Instagram filter, go with medium or disable. But uh, if you're using DLSS or FSR, you don't have the sharpening uh, slider under it. So my recommendation is go with I. You should be fine. So this is pretty much it, guys, for my Silent Hill 2 guide. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.